So <coughs> this is the point of time also. So that you really need to, you know, uh, think about the board of directors. Earlier we were talking about board of advisors. This is the point of time you start thinking about the board of directors. What kind of people are you? Some of the advisors we graduate with this, you know, board of directors kind of uh, position because you've known them enough and you think they are now big enough for you to put in the board of directors kind of group. Or you might have one to bring outside people because the company has taken the business model has taken whatever you might want to bring different people in the group. Again, you know, this is the board has to be the kind, not friends and family. <coughs> because the biggest reason why people fail is they don't get the right feedback on where they are going wrong. Everybody around them, if you surround yourself with people who are telling you, wow, what a great person you are, what a cool thing you are doing, what, you know, what are you going to do? Because as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, the, the biggest problem is you are lonely. You are alone. So, you know, you've got to get it, whether it's board of advisor, whether it's this board of director, these are the people who are going to tell you when you are going wrong. So they have to be the kind of people who do not care so much that they keep, you know, they going to, so they can't be friends and families. They have to come outside of that. They have to be people who respect you, but who are willing to take that call and tell you where you are going wrong. They are the people who will stop you from doing wrong things. You know, sometimes you get so enthused and motivated and all that, that you are willing to ignore some certain things. An employee doing very well for you, but you know his integrity is questionable. But you are willing to look the other way because you think, you know, I'll take right. care of that problem later. A veto is okay. That the, the board should be the kind of chance you first get to know. Because once you report these things, you survive. You survive and you do better for these kind of calls rather than the other way. But at that point, it's very really hard when you're sitting there and you know, fighting many battles to realize that this is how it is going to be. So you need that kind of people who will tell you. Again, and make that effort through your investors, through your friends, through your employees, to reach out to such people who you want to talk to them, spend enough time, and get them sign up for you, I mean, sign them up so that these are the long term things, you can like a foundation block. So spend enough time on it. It's not, you know, let's get it done with the game the next thing. Right? It doesn't work that way. And uh, you know, again to you know this stage two, you can you know you can go to stage three and we can talk about what it takes to get people like that. The message that I really want to give is you have to keep hiring. At no point, I have heard companies, small companies, say, oh, right now I don't have a position for this. Not true at all. If you, at, at these stages of a company, when you hire a person, you should not be looking at absolute cost of a person. Rather, as if I get him in and if I'm able to pay his salary for the next six months, within six months, will he generate enough? to pay for himself and more. So it is always a return on investment. So if you are thinking on return on investment angle, then you can never be saying no to a good guy. You can never be saying, I don't have a position for you. Those are for big companies. Big companies have positions, they fill in people, they have budgets. How many small can company can you do that kind of approach? It won't work. So in, you know, whenever you are looking for this, really good guy and you find him somebody whom you can use in your company, get him in. You may not be looking out for him. You might just have landed up from somebody, you know, the same. Yeah. So you, you might, you know, you find all these guys, you know, coming from you as desperate to move back, don't have the right business. Maybe the right kind of guy for you. Get him in. Say, okay boss, what do you want? I'll help you settle down. Let's talk. So it could be, you know, sometimes it's just those kind of happenstance moments that you get your best guys. So 
So don't let go of them thinking that I'm not hiring right now. I don't need people right now. Why am I getting That's the wrong way. Keep, high, keep building the pipeline because at any point, if your business requires a different kind of person or whatever, you met that guy yesterday for coffee, he might be like, call him in. So, key thing as a CEO, as a founder, is to cultivate everybody and everybody you think would be a potential employee. Marketing your company, marketing yourself, marketing your team to them and making sure that you get people to come rather than the other way around. That's kind of the message. Thanks, Anu. At this point, I think we'll now open it up back to Q&A. <laughs> uh, yeah. First and foremost, we started with the revolution when you hire Indonesian employees. Do you give them the what they want? What is the flexibility they want? You know, flexible working hours, flexible timings and all. Does it uh, really give a right message to them saying that this company is a really professional or do they take those things into their advantage? You know? Over a period of time, if you give them flexible hours, you, uh, you tend to, you know, uh, follow the environment uh, in the organization when other people, this guy has got this facility or not. So whether those can give the right signals to them when you, when you ask them then what they want and try to affect them. That was the first thing that I wanted to do. The second important thing is when you start with an idea, when you have a startup, and you, you really ignite those passion into people to come and join you. Okay? And uh, what happens is over a period of time, due to the environment <laughs> outside, due to the you know economic situations happening around, your uh, project or your startup, there's a gestation period which happens. Things don't work the way they were supposed to. It may take a little longer time. And you are still convinced with your idea, you are still convinced with your passion. But you see your employees or the people whom you have attracted, losing sight over things. You know, they tend to they tend to get into this thing that you know things are not working the way they thought, or they don't start, you know, deviating from the passion that you have. So how do you retain those people and you know continue to uh, input their uh, this thing in the startup and you know things will be better now, things will start improving. So you tend to retain them, you want them to continue, but they don't still have the same kind of passion. So how do you how do you create an environment so that you can keep on depending them? So the first so one, you know the flexing time one, mm -hmm. getting fed to work and whatever I talk <coughs> Like I said, first vet the people, you know. If you feel you only you're doing all this for this choice set of people who are super active, the first your first core employees who are going to get you into the series B funding with great valuation, this that and now, this set of people, each of them will respect the other. So this question of, you know, is he taking advantage of this and not working? So the work will show. See, you can't hide. In a big company, work doesn't show. You can come into a company, do nothing for six months, nobody would know. Therefore, in a big company, it's very important that you know that the person is turning up to work every day at 9 o'clock. And he's sitting there till 9. Hopefully, in the 9 to 9, he will do something. You can't just keep idle all the time. So that is why they have those structures. In a small company, if a person does not do work, everybody will know you don't need performance appraisals. Don't waste your time on performance appraisals. Everybody knows who is working, who is not working. Okay? So they respect the other person for the work. They don't respect him because he is turning up every day to work at 9 o'clock. And another big thing, and this is an interview process itself, you should be able to make out, but if you do a mistake, if you have bad apples, throw them out. If there are people in the company who are talking negative, who are you know, bringing the morale of the place down, throw them out. Because they can create phenomenal damage in one bad apple. I mean, they can really create. So throw them out. And the others are watching what you're doing. So if you throw them out, Excellent signal saying, you know what? This is not what I want in my company. Because as you are building this team, you are also building the culture within them. What kind of company are you? What values do you stand for? Whom do you, how do you want others to perceive? That's very important. 
I was talking of this slide share and how Amit Ranjan did the last <coughs> Go read his blogs. He was the first to organize uh, this uh, uh, event in um, Delhi, which is what you know, just coders to get together, talk about open source, talk about this, and talk about that, and all that. Uh, what is it called? It open is coffee. Open coffee or one of those. He organized that in Gurgaon, and you know, Delhi is not the capital for this. I mean, you would expect it, Bangalore to have it or places like that. But he got the crowd to come, and even if there is, you know, Gurgaon has only 10 people who are those kind of people. Those 10 know Amit Ranjan and slide share and think it's a place to work for, isn't it? That is what you need. See, ultimately, one of the things you need to remember you need three people, four people, you're not looking for hundreds. So it becomes easier. The joke is very simple if you look at it. All you need is those two people. So, how do you get it? This way I find is phenomenally useful, you know, especially in the you know, your domain space, you know what you're doing, you're, you know where you're going. Getting into that, people to come to your office, spending time, you watch them, you, they have come for this, uh, whatever, open coffee or whatever, and you're watching them saying, could he be my potential employee? You know, then you know whether you want this guy or not because he's not in an interview mode. So the, you learn so much more about him or her in that kind of a situation. Then you say, okay, I don't want him. Then you go out of your way. Yeah, pursue. That's the way it goes. It is not a passive thing. It's a very active, high energy, interactive kind of job. Now, you give an example of Sean Parker, that he became an advisor of the pro woman, that he came as a president, that he invested in the company. Only for that, he comes as an advisor, who actually gets some basic agenda, and then he would like to, he doesn't have money to actually get that. If you read the field, it's actually so much value that you want to kind of hold on to him long term. You mean stuff. You want to see point to person. Yeah. There are, in fact, if you go to this uh, website called Founder Institute, you will have standard advisor agreements available. Uh, he said, don't go to the uh, job sites. 
Uh, and also you get exactly what that looks like. Uh, but that's like in the United States. How, how do you scout for talent? Same here? thing happens here. Actually, the funny thing is the best people today want to work for startups. Here, if you go, yes, you know, the, the funny thing is, the, who are the people right now who all want to go for startups? The IIT guys. The first ones who are really getting out and saying, I don't want a job, I want to go work for startup, are actually the IIT guys. And the reason is that they have realized that if they go into these big companies, that they not even using 1% of their they actually went down the Yes, they realized it. Because they're smarter, they realized it faster than this. But the rest all, I mean, I haven't seen any of these, uh, you know, good schools, above average people, they don't want to work for big companies. In fact, that's one way of getting out whether they are the A plus category that you're looking for. They themselves will tell you why they don't want to work for them, why they don't want to work for you, because it's, they are smart enough to know. See, when you get the right guys, the conversation is very equal. They'll tell you why they want to work for you, more than you tell you. But well, then what happens is that the family, the father, you know, all come into picture and the thing collapse. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right. I had two IIT guys here. What was family pressure? So, what happens is in the US, you don't have a family pressure, so people are decision makers. So, good now you know the culture of the place. So, what you do is when you they first come for interview, say, I want to interview your parents. Mm -hmm. Get them. Yeah, yeah, because see, you're uh, employing five people. Can you spend that time? You spend that time with the dad because you know how a dad's mindset was. Because mm -hmm. you have your own dad. He's telling you whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know exactly how. So, you can play on it. Yeah. You use it to your advantage. Other, other, other side of it is. The parents want the kid to work in your company, even if you're doing badly and you're not doing salaries. I know that guy who cannot teach him. So you have made them root for you. Yes, it's additional effort. What does all mean? It means a lot of additional effort in hiring. It means that you are looking at, you know, I was surprised from companies. They will say, I have got this recruiter, you know, they, they are doing that. Who can recruiter do? HR person, we are not going to hire for you because they don't know the pulse of the the soul of the company that you do. They can only hire only once you go to a stage where things have gone from that stage to the next stage. So initially it's your job. So whether it's meeting the father, whether it's meeting the mother, whether it's meeting the wife, whether it's fans, whatever it becomes a good reference check. Yes, it makes a very good reference check. You know, Vipro used to say this in a major way. Initially, when the first set of people that now they hire, they hire from middle class families where the need to work and learn a living was important. They did not hire anybody who came from very well off background. Neither did they hire anybody whose father was a you know contractor, this, that, where they knew the, the, the integrity levels were very questionable. Because they said, if he's seen, grown up seeing that kind of integrity levels, He's going to be somewhat bringing that to the table and we don't want to. So, family background in India is <coughs> important. So, spend the time, get to know. No, you'll what be surprised. kind of schools, what kind of college and why, you know? No, you'll be surprised at two things. One is startups have become very romantic now. So, it's actually easier to hire for a startup now than it was like maybe three years ago or five years ago. But you have to have a differentiator. And going on, if you don't have a differentiator, why do you even waste no, there's so many other ways. No, 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 the second point is the amount of frustrated high bandwidth guys in corporate jobs has taken a geometric progression. It's yeah. really easy to hire a high bandwidth frustrated guy now because there is more frustration yes, yes, at yes. higher bandwidth. See, <laughs> ultimately in an MNC, the, 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 uh, the highest level that anybody can achieve is the director. That's all. The head of HR for an MNC is called director HR. You can go and check it out. And director is the first senior slash mid-level position. After that, the others come. So you were money to reach there. Or your highest is their first. <coughs> That's what it is. And Indian companies, most of it we know. Family businesses, this, that. I mean, they are big, but they don't give you 
that they don't need in most of them. My second question which I asked. Huh. Oh, I, sorry. What was it? No, it was like, you know, uh, when you start up, you have a little bit of time uh, due to all the economic situations. Huh. The ups and downs. Right. 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 How do you maintain uh, this and you know, you keep on uh, making them convince about the idea? And because and also the reward. See, keep reminding them that if it succeeds, then what is the big stake in it for them? That's why that big stake is important. No, but then, so, uh, uh, you, you, you have your own staff, so you have that passion. You keep on sticking to that thing. You keep on plugging in the holes here and there. It just is running around. But it's human nature for an employee. He understands what he get. I get 5%, 10% over 3 years, 4 years. But it's, it's human nature. They become too overtired. So, so, for instance, if I was <coughs> running a taxi, a call taxi service, I'll take out everything that's been written about the Uber and put it up on the boss and say, you get the valuation this company which is in a similar line has got. Boss, we can get this. Just give me that little support. We'll make it happen. And if that happens, your one person is going to be this much. Mm -hmm. Chat with him. Do you, do you know how much your one person is worth today? It is this. You keep reinforcing that. After all, there are 10 people working for you. And if you reinforce it and he feels like that, he go to, you know, represent that same feeling, whether he goes to meet a customer or whether he goes to meet your any vendor or whether he's meeting future employees. So each person is selling for the company. Okay? So you put that effort into this fight and take the doing that. They'll stick with you. See, finally, think of yourself in their shoes. And then you will know what to do. Because you only do the same things, isn't it? We are all not very different eventually. We are, not, we are very similar. So don't think that, you know, I am founder, so I have passion. All these guys here, you know, sucking blood out. Of <laughs> get them on your side. Once they come on your side, sometimes even if you are willing to give up, they won't let you go. They push you in. Don't get them this far. Let's make it up. So you have to make them feel they've come this far. So another big thing in this kind of set of people, transparency. Be transparent about <coughs> what you're doing, why you're doing something. What is happening? Success, failures, be transparent so that people kind of know that, you know, main reason why that feeling that let me quit happens is they don't know what's happening. And they feel like this is not going anywhere. And they don't have anybody to tell them that these are the one, two, three things that makes me feel it will go somewhere. Come, let me show you. Take them on a customer call. Take them on a no. Transparency of who? The third tier, you said. Yes. It is the first set of employees. So, <coughs> when the series B stage is reached, you have to work in a very cohesive you know, family, my company, my family, my company. And 24 by 7, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> then the thing changes because you have to bring in different people. That will bring in people in the institution. So some kind of systems and process have to come in. You can't be a startup all your life. Then also your recipe for failure. You know? Because I have seen in India companies 20 years and they are still looking like startups and they okay. See, it's like a kid, you know, kid grows through stages. If a you know adolescent stage, series B is adolescent stage. <laughs> the objective of startup is not to stay a startup. Yeah, forever because you know, uh, adult behaving like a child, yeah. what does it mean? Something, Something is wrong. wrong. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It doesn't look cute anymore. A child behaving like a child looks cute. But adult behaving like a child doesn't look like a uh, Many people see uh, HR person as a luxury expense. So like, uh, after they reach a certain size, then they say it's worth spending. But in reality, I see it the other way around. So at what stage you take a call, do you need the help of an HR person? Because you as an entrepreneur, of course, you have to think a lot on the HR aspects. But there are many other, like the operation, the marketing, and you know, many other things. 
If you're going to take up everything on your head, then it's not going to happen. So when do you take a call, can okay, I need the help of this HR person? At what so you side? Have some of these things, like a finance person, an HR person, when you're really small, you may not have necessity for a full time but like you said, they are critical people. I mean, you are trying to set a culture, you want to get certain things in place, you want somebody who helps the right you. people. Yeah, and also. also helps you sounding good. You want to talk to them and say, you know, am I doing this right? You know, what is your thing? So, bring in consultants. And if they work out for you, make them full time employees later on. There's a lot of the right, you know, guys or people whom you work with in your early stages. As from an external, you know, they will spend a few hours a week, not full time. But as the company grows and as the requirement increases, they will spend more and more time. And eventually there will be a point where you say, do you want to come full time on board, you know? You understand that. Yeah, and that goes. That's the one way of thinking. How to differentiate between an advisor and Advisors are people who are never going to be really, you know, they are higher. They know more, they have done a lot, they are not. Consultants you would pay. First consultants you would pay for the time. If they're spending two hours, three hours, you will pay for the time. And you will, you know, have a yeah, set of also you, pay. you might pay, but you may not pay also. And they are at a strategy level. Consultants are going to be more execution level people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so the problem with consultants is that technically you're right. That's why they're supposed to be. But they err on the strategy level. You know? Give a lot of heart, uh, don't give it too bad experience. Yeah. Don't get uh, it. This is why we announced HR after that. Which is yeah. Sort of the stress. And you know, I might as well have my own guy who's reporting it to me. Who's yeah. Because you're right, they'll come in for a couple of hours mm -hmm. and you don't know, right? Which is why you're hiring. Sometimes I don't know. Personally, I find this a big thing that there are a lot of women who are very good, very intelligent, very smart, and they become consultants or they become this few hours a week because they cannot work with them because of many reasons. They are taking a break because they are having a child or child is school going, you know, half day school, less, less, those kind of issues. Ultimate goals because get them on board, they want to keep themselves working, they want to be in touch, they don't want to get out of the, uh, you know, work back thing. But they are, they won't cost, you know, they are coming for right people. So one of the big things is, why is somebody coming to you? What are the reasons? Go deeper. If they tell you, no, oh, I'm coming because, you know, it just happens that you are next door to me. <laughs> Go find out what reason and when you're convinced they're coming to you for the right reason, that itself is, you know, a qualification process in terms of their, their for good because. So how do you ensure the execution from a consultant? Simply put. That's the question. Because they'll say, no, no, we need to set up a framework. I've been there, done that. And the framework that someone wants to set up. And then there is only a framework, there is no execution. Give them small tasks and tell them, just do this for me and come back. If they are not able to do it, okay. do not sign up anybody for long term work, consulting, retainer, blah, blah, blah. Don't see what they can do for you in the first small thing. Give them those. Break it. And say, can you do this for me? They can't do it, then they do it. And do reference checks. Biggest thing, I mean, I feel like what happens, I mean, why in a Silicon Valley people succeed and if you talk about ecosystem and all that, the ecosystem is about all this. If somebody tells you that this consultant I work with and he or she did a fantastic job, you can blindly go with them. Because you don't want to be wasting time redoing that entire qualification process with somebody else. So, I think one of the big things that like Thai kind of organization should be doing is that creating that kind of a roster of you know, consultants, advisors, and people like that who are already vetted to an extent. And therefore, you can quickly say, oh, you want the compensation thing? This is the best way. Call him and and finish it So, I think that's what an ecosystem is all about. My name is Rikhan Zoman. I have a question of you know, my friend has asked how to retain the best talent like uh, I can take a real uh, example if you know uh, 
when narayan murthy left patni how could patni make sure that this guy wouldn't have left even though he left and he made an incident that too but how they make sure that you know narayan murthy would stay with the patni and the, the second thing is getting to this only how to stop that catastrophic effect like if narayan murthy is leaving then none of them will be there so if one go you know wrong <laughs> people leave is that yeah first is he did stay for some time with them i mean it was not except in the first year or something like that he did stay for a while and you know did some good work for him. so some of this you know ultimately means like i said when you reach the series base b stage and then the third stage you are a grown up company so you can afford to let people go okay that's one what stage is it <coughs> really? second is that in if you look at a patni eventually he was proved right remained a family concerned with family people owning and all the power okay and they did not really give stock options they did not do any of those things that's why he when he went out and started to say i don't want to do those mistakes so he created stock options he made sure everybody felt like he was part of the company so i think those are the kind of things that you do to retain people do you really want see saying i want to retain is one thing and doing it in actions is another thing believe me your employees are very smart and that's why you're hiring them because they are smart so can't they see through what you're doing that's what happens and how to stop that catastrophic effect one person is living at the start of at the age of his level so a person is living okay at the reality if a person is going through very good opportunity in another, another startup he may live so then be open about it talk about it say to me so you know have a big party and say hey you know what we are all very happy for him but so sad that he's going to be missing out on the fun and action that we are going to have here but it's okay you want to come back big you know he can come so make it so open why do be on the defensive so retention can be one big topic and probably we could do that in future you know when we talk about retention because we require equal amount of time so of course why you know i was uh, spending a lot of time on this but Maybe you know we we need much more time to get into this, but offense is the best form of defense. If you have nothing that you have done wrong, just take it out. Yeah. Hmm? I said offense is the best form of defense. Why do you think that the person leaving is your fault? Maybe it's his fault. So make everybody feel that the fellow is doing a mistake rather than the other. <laughs> What you know, with a kind of a guys like uh, you know, I have few, and one of them I'll give an example. Like I have a, I have a student like he's in fourth year from Anand Trichy, and he has done well in his JEE exams and that exams. And uh, currently my requirement is like I need someone who can code, you know, at to a certain level. And he can't code, but he has certain skills where he can, you know, uh, get into uh, and crack the systems. Mm -hmm. Like when I gave him something about Facebook, he found out what where they are weak. And similar level of scope. So he is good in uh, these kinds of activities. And he currently, like we are in his touch, he is showing some passion over stuff that we are doing. He has left college, he has come, he is staying with us in our apartment. He is not attending, attending classes. So, like, if we have like one or two more such kind of things. So, at current point of time, we are in the early start, you know, start age. We don't have money to give them. How to, like, uh, keep them in and build passion? We don't have to keep them. We don't care if we care. No, we have, but we have a lot of people. I was like, uh, we can't decide on that stage that so I can say. Sit down and decide. Sit down and decide. Why can't you do it? You want people. You want people to give up their studies and come sit with you and work. Should you not show them some part? No, he will be going back to the college. He won't be leaving the college. If he leaves the college, then we are okay with that. Because we know we can train him and, and he can do it. Very good job. Yeah, so make sure he is going to finish and come and join you. So whatever you need to give, you need to have that happen. But then this time period when he is there in the college, you know, we might be, uh, you know, with how to engage them. It's not with one. Like I have a few Talk. other juniors and friends. Talk. Talk. Send. Like I said, write a blog or something which teaches him every week. He knows that you are existing and you are doing this. <laughs> Currently, this guy we have given certain jobs where he can make money online. So we have asked him like, okay, you take part, take part of the funding of the company, like right? this uh, make funds because he is not at the stage where you can ask him like, you can become a coder in two days. It will take him some time. So 
So we are giving them assignments. You complete these assignments on so period basis. Yeah, so but keep engaged with these people. I mean, the key thing is what happens is if you're not top of the mind, they, their mind wanders into something else. So keep engaged. If you're calling them every day, if you're sending something every day, if you have something to talk to them or, you know, then they are going to remember and they're going to come back. I have one suggestion. Since you said he's good at finding weaknesses, we need him. To, to make, make him research your competitors, find their weaknesses and make them your strengths. Yeah. 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 And what's about yeah. those kinds of advisors, you know, especially like I got some people and they were advising me something like, I really got influence with them and okay, it was okay, but after reading the whole system, what they told me, you know, I finished it within like three, four days. After that, you know, slowly I'm finding that their advice is not useful to me. It's like, you know, I have gone Past a them. little beyond yeah. them. It should so make Should yeah. I get rid of them? Yes. Get yes. Don't waste your time. See. Because they are making a relation. No. Advisors and all, why do you keep them outside of the company? Why are they not employed? Because at different stages of the company, you need different kinds of advisors. So you bring them on at that stage and then you they go away, you get the next step. Most often, if you are ever drawing a contract with an advisor, you should have an exit clause because they need to, somebody talk about exit clause. They need to go out.